All right, guys, so welcome and thank you for joining this video. I will be focusing primarily on how to render up uh, setting up a scene like this and not the modeling of the bottle or anything because this model is from Keyshot, their cloud library, and I'm using a demo version of Keyshot 10 at the moment, so don't worry about that. It's just, yeah, it's just what it is. So, so without really going into further detail, let's just get started. Um, so first up, I'm gonna open up uh, Keyshot 10. Yeah, so I'm gonna open up Keyshot 10. And uh, as you can see here, when it's opening, it's a demo version uh, with this beautiful render from Magnus Scogsplore. It's really, really awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna jump in once it's finished loading all the materials and everything. Um, and I'm gonna go into their, uh, I'm gonna download a model from the Keyshot Light Lab which is where I found the model here that we're using. And Key should have a great uh, small tutorial on how to, to work with labels, and they're using this model as well for that. You can find it on the website. I'll see if I can put a link in it in the description below. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to download it. As you can see, I have it over here. Uh, so I'm just going to close this down and, and then drag this one into my scene. Um, Calculating some displacement and stuff because the drops are actually displacement. Uh, displaced uh, a texture there, so a spot texture that is displaced. Anyway, here it is. You can see it's already pretty, pretty good, looking pretty good. Um, so I'm gonna just uh, look at this and see what is inside of this liquid. Uh, and I'm gonna use that right now for as uh, for anything right now. And then there's the cap. I'm not gonna use that for the view that I have. Right, now. I'm not gonna change anything on that one as either. I'm just gonna try and try and leave it as it is for now. Uh, and yeah, the bottle itself. And as you can see here, I'm trying to figure out a good place to, to position this. Um, and again, you can see all the details it's looking really, really nice. Uh, as you can see here, the displaced um, spot texture and the roughness and everything. It's really, really great. And the label, of course. Um, so yeah. So let me just uh, turn on. I can just, yeah, I'm just going to show you with a material graph here, as you can see before. It's like these uh, textures that they're using a cool texture map to use for the bump map of the glass also the same one goes into the background so it's been used for the roughness for the label and also again for the roughness for the glass and then you have um, the label itself which is the white one and it's synced together with this one so both of the diffuse and the bump and they're, they're, they're synced up so that's kind of like how it's it's working and i'm not going to go into more detail right now okay so i'm going to close it down as you can see here and then we're going to continue. Um, first up, I'm just going to uh, unhide the layers, and then I'm going to try and look at the scene. I'm actually going to add another model into the uh, scene, which is a, a backdrop ramp, which is the one I also used for the render that you saw in the beginning of this video. I'm going to position that and spend a little time on that, trying to get it to the right position, as you can see here. And then it's about finding the right angle also for your model that you want to use it for so i'm gonna go into my um <clears throat> my camera angle here to see if i can you know uh, come up with the right place where i can show the the bottle in the best possible way it's gonna do a little bit here and yeah you'll see that i'm gonna come up with where it looks a little bit more dramatic in the angle so now this is a little bit less probably gonna go to two yeah okay and then I'm gonna maybe I'm gonna change the uh, lens uh, setting uh, perspective or yeah I'm just gonna change that to 65, which is something I typically use to make it a little bit less exaggerated in the in the perspective. And I'm gonna add uh, that camera here. And now that I have that saved, I can start looking at what my backdrop wrap looks like. So I'm gonna go into my um, uh, scene tree and then move it a little bit around here. And now that that's done, I'm going to go into um, the camera view again, and then I'm going to add a material, uh, which is what I'm trying to do right now. Just a simple drywall material, and then it's uh, about setting up the lighting, actually. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm in interior mode, and then I like to crank up the shadow quality all the way to the very top. I don't know, it's just me. Then I'm going to go into the environment and start setting up the HDRI map and I'm gonna make my own because it's actually quite simple and it's it's proven quite effective. I 
probably should save these once I finish them up, but I end up just making new ones because I find that it's, you know, improving my work all the time. So uh, just going to pick an almost black. I'm just going to probably end up with a black anyway at the end. But now, as you can see, I'm going to uh, add a, a pin light or a new light, and then I'm going to change it to a rectangle one, and then going to work a little bit on the size and move it around. As you can see, it's a little bit hard to see the highlight. It's quite nice, but not really giving me what I want. So I think I'm going to go into the, I'm going to try and find the background of the HDRI editor. Oh yeah, it's underneath the editor. And it's uh, uh, it's right there. If you click on the background, there it is. That you make it completely black. It makes it easier to see where your light is going to hit. And then I'm going to crank up the brightness. Uh, so it gets more closer to what I really want in the end. Um, I'm not going to crank it all the way up, but I'm going to show you later on how to do that here with a, another trick that I learned from Sam Gewilt. Uh I'm also going to link to him below so you can see how he's working with HDRIs as well. Um, so yeah, here we go. I'm going to add, try and figure out a good place for it so I can get a nice highlight on the bottle. Um, and you can also see that I'm trying to catch the um, the drops here as well on the outer side. And then I'm going to add another light, a little pin light here. Uh, again, choose rectangular and then move it around to, so I can get some light on the other side. And now it's just like playing around with it uh, and trying to figure out, you know, the size again of the rectangle, uh, how much light should be, you know, hitting and, and what about the shadows. And so that's all I'm trying to figure out here right now. It's actually setting up the scene so I get the right look that I'm going for which is something with a nice strong highlight and also a good shadow, but mainly one shadow on the on the floor. So, um, yeah, and then I'm gonna, you know, work with the, with the fall off a little bit to see if I can get it, uh, some of the more hard and some of the less hard. And again, it's also to, got to do something with, it's got to do with the shadow on the floor as well. Um, so it's a little bit of both actually. And then I'm going to add another one, another highlight, and it's actually to try and get uh, a good overall light that also hits the backdrop uh, from top. And I'm going to tone down a little bit more. Uh, and then actually, I think I'm pretty much done with the with the lighting setup for this one. It's really, really simple. Um, and then you say, well, it's not really dark, but that's when you go into the image setting, which is also the one that I've been using before. I think I've shown it in, in another video. But basically, I'm going to go in and add a new one, uh, choose photographic, and crank up the exposure, basically, um, to something where it looks really nice. And now you can see it gets more dramatic, the one gets more white, all that stuff. So it's pretty, really good. Um, so I'm going to also, I think I'm not really happy with that background there, because you get that shadow effect. So I'm just trying to get rid of that. Um, and also maybe adding a little bit more oomph to that white highlight over there. Uh, crank it up to four. Yeah, it starts looking a little bit better now. <clears throat> Sorry, it's taking a little bit of time, but it's more, it's nice to get this done um, in a good way so it looks the way you want it to. Yeah, again, working a little bit with the fall off. Uh, yeah, not really much here. Um, but basically, this is all stuff that you can play around with yourself if you want to. Um, uh, it's very, very simple to do. You only have three lights in this one, basically. Uh, once I'm really quite satisfied with that bit, I'll go up to the top light there and add a little bit more because I want it to be less dramatic, that shadow in the background there. Uh, so, yeah, I think I'm about more or less happy with that right now. Um, you can also go in and change the backdrop position, which I'm trying to do here right now. And also, as you can see here, you, there's also this um, moving around the plane, the background, background plane, and then trying to go into my uh, uh, environment again and tweak all the settings a little bit more, the fall off, the brightness, until I'm really happy about that. 
And once I'm done, I can continue going back into the image settings. I'm going to work a little bit more on my contrast because it always helps. I'm also going to add in the curvature here. Uh, I'm just going to turn down the, uh, the shadows and the midtones and brighten up the, the, the highlights uh, as well a little bit. And that will help out uh, in terms of getting this right. Um, so yeah, now we're actually getting really, really close to what I want. Uh, which is quite nice. So basically all that's left now is, is going in and playing around with it, setting up new cameras uh, that you might give some more detail if you wanted to, like looking at this where I add, I'm adding a depth of field to get a little bit more realism into it. And then you have like, two cool views that you can use for your shots. You can go in and change the materials. You can go in and change um, the color of the liquid, for instance. This one looks nice, uh, and you can just keep on changing stuff. You can go in and, and add labels if you want. Um, and so, yeah, so you can go in, and I'm just going to replace the one that's there, there and then adding a Keyshot logo, trying to squeeze it down so you can actually see it. Uh, and basically just, you know, playing around with it. Maybe I can find another texture like this 23 here. Maybe that would be a good one. Where they go? There it is. Gonna add that there, that looks nice. Uh, there. Maybe I'm just gonna go back and change the bottle a little bit because it looks a little bit weird playing around the colors. It's quite open what you can do with this uh, quite quickly and to get what you want. Um, so yeah, so that's basically how I set it up in the beginning. And uh, you can see I'm just gonna add another uh, liquid type, the mango one. And then I need to change the color of the, um, the bottle again to get the Win sides out, and now I'm actually done. So, thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something.